Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll be discussing the venous supply of the heart. As we all remember that in the right atrium we had a coronary sinus. This hole right here, which I told you that it's a space or a hole. So what was the significance of this? We will learn in the venous drainage of the heart. So what happens and how is the deoxygenated blood of the heart going to be drained? The entire story starts at the posterior part of the heart, just below the left atrium. This major venous channel is known as the coronary sinus. So coronary sinus is the major venous channel of the heart that is draining most of the vessels of the heart. So the coronary sinus is located in the posterior surface of the heart between the left atrium and the left ventricle and it is going to receive a couple of tributaries. So what tributaries does it receive? The most important of these tributaries is the great cardiac vein. So let's talk about the great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein begins at the anterior interventricular groove accompanying the left anterior descending artery. It drains this entire area and this is the first part of the great cardiac vein. The first part ends where it enters the coronary sulcus. The second part of the great cardiac vein is going to be running in the coronary sulcus, winding around the left border of the heart, receiving a marginal branch accompanying the left marginal artery that will drain into the great cardiac vein. And once it comes towards the posterior of the heart, it drains into the coronary sinus. And then we have the middle cardiac vein, which is a little smaller than the great cardiac vein. The middle cardiac vein is going to come from the posterior interventricular groove accompanying the posterior interventricular branch of the artery. It will drain the anterior interventricular groove and finally drain or become a tributary of the coronary sinus. And finally, the small cardiac vein is going to be lying at the right border of the heart accompanying the right marginal artery. It as well will drain into the eventually the coronary sinus. There is another vein known as the oblique vein which has embryologic significance. The oblique vein is going to be lying on the left atrium and with the oblique vein and the great cardiac vein when they meet their meeting point is where the coronary sinus is formed. And finally the coronary sinus carrying the deoxygenated blood obviously has to drain somehow into the right atrium because that is your deoxygenated chamber. So the coronary sinus opens in the right atrium through this hole called the coronary sinus opening and the deoxygenated blood is then pumped to the lungs and you know how the cycle goes. Apart from this there are other small veins of the heart known as the venae cordis minimi or the smallest cardiac veins. All of these veins are basically draining minute portions of the heart. You can't see these venae cordis minimi, they're very minute. They are draining multiple areas of the heart and they are opening up also in the multiple chambers of the heart with tiny, tiny, tiny openings that are not visible. So that was all about the venous supply of the heart. So now let's study the nerve supply of the heart. The nerve supply of the heart is very simple since it's a viscera. The viscera is always supplied by autonomic nerves. Autonomic nerve stands for the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. So nerve supply of the heart is going to be derived from the parasympathetic system via the vagus nerve and a branch of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And the sympathetic supply of the heart will be derived from the, we already have studied the sympathetic chain, which had a cervical part and a thoracolumbar part. The cervical part of the chain had superior, middle and inferior cervical ganglions. And we already know that in the thoracic sympathetic chain, the T1 to T5 ganglia were giving contribution via the cardiac branches to the cardiac plexuses. Hence, the sympathetic supply of the heart involves the superior middle inferior cervical ganglion and the T1 to T5 thoracic sympathetic ganglia. So this was a brief understanding of what will be supplying the heart. However, now we need to know how these will be supplying the heart. The difference of questions is what and how. So I've already told you what is supplying the heart. It won't just be supplying the heart like that. There is a more formal way of supplying the heart 
the heart has two plexuses the deep cardiac plexus and the superficial cardiac plexus and this is how the heart will be supplied with its autonomic nerves via the superficial and deep cardiac plexuses the superficial cardiac plexus is lying beneath the arch of aorta so you can say right here is the superficial cardiac plexus the superficial cardiac plexus will receive branches from the left side and which branches will it receive it will receive the left inferior vagal cardiac branch and the left superior cervical cardiac branch these were the main supplies of superficial cardiac plexus or you can say this is how the superficial cardiac plexus is formed via the cardiac branches of the inferior branch of the vagus and the superior cervical ganglion branch of the sympathetic chain the deep cardiac plexus is going to be lying beneath the bifurcation of your trachea and it is very simple that the deep cardiac plexus is going to be formed by all of the branches of the right and left sympathetic and parasympathetic supplies apart from the supplies that are going to be busy with the superficial cardiac plexus hence apart from the superior cervical ganglion and the inferior branch of the vagus we are going to give it all supplies superior ganglion middle cervical ganglion the inferior cervical ganglion the t1 to t5 thoracic ganglia are giving it supply it receives the recurrent laryngeal supply the superior the inferior cardiac branch of the vagus this was a brief understanding of the nerve supply of the heart and that's all you need to know don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching